everyone. Welcome back to Business as a Magical Practice. We have a special guest today, Casey Lightbody, who is the founder and CEO of The Quiet Collective, a soulful sisterhood of quietly powerful women leaders in business who yearn to start and scale impact-driven businesses together. She's been featured on Entrepreneur on Fire and The Introverted Entrepreneur and authored three Amazon best-selling books. So today, like if you're an introvert with many people who are listening are. <laughs> I sometimes identify as an introvert and sometimes I don't. I mainly do. So I'm really excited about this topic. Um, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, a little bit more about Casey before we jump in. Uh, leveraging her 15 plus years of university education and the work-life experience she's gained from living on three different continents and inter interviewing over 80 industry leaders, Casey has developed the Quiet Conquer Code, a framework that puts the human connection back into marketing and business. Using these tools, techniques, and strategies for herself as a business and marketing strategist, she's been able to start and grow two successful six-plus figure businesses sustainably. Now she helps other introverted, intuitive, sensitive women claim their true power and create their own successful, sustainable businesses 100% on their terms. So welcome to the podcast. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor. Thank you. Thank you. And you guys, uh, I usually don't take pitches for the podcast. Um, I usually will reach out to people that I want to. Um, a part of that is like my human design is manifester. So it just works out better if I instigate. Um, but also I usually, um, it's usually this cookie cutter, someone else reaching out, them not even understanding who comes on the, it, it's just, it's lame. Um, so I, I rarely take podcasts that are pitched to me. Um, but Casey sent an email with like a video and like all of these, uh, this amazing pitch framework. I could totally tell as a pitch framework, but I was so impressed by it. It was like, okay, she should, she can for sure come on. Um, so I just wanted to, I know this is something you teach. So I, I really, and like with the human com connection bit. So I just wanted to really shout that out. Thank you so much, Sam. That's a, that's exactly it, right? And this is, I think, we we forget what it's like in the online space is that um, it's so noisy out there. Mm -hmm. And it's like, how do you stand out? We can talk about the whole quiet rebel thing in a little while, but it is, how do you actually stand out? And the piece that really stands out for me is how can I go the extra mile to stand mm -hmm. out? Because at the end of the day, marketing sales is all about relationships. Relationships is the price of currency to grow in your business. And so how can we actually start to build those little threads of connection to actually stand out? And um, I'm so glad that it did stand out. And here I am now, right? <laughs> So just muted and I'm muted and unmuted okay so we're really happy to have you and I don't think we've talked about being an introvert on the podcast before and it's been a couple mm -hmm. of years so I'm like wait how have we not talked about this <laughs> um so let's just like what is an introvert who are introverts let's just start there with the basic basics yeah and so again, I was a pretend extrovert, I think, for the first 35 or 40 years of my life. And little did I know that I was, right? But I started a, my first business, which was a marketing agency, a consulting business that turned agency when we immigrated to Australia. I'd always had this dream of starting my own business. So I took the plunge, started the business. The business grew, obviously, because my background's in marketing, so I knew how to market myself. But I remember sitting at this very desk one day and I was like, what have I created? I've, it's not my dream. It's actually a nightmare. And I was completely burnt out, completely exhausted. And it was only then that I started to do some, this is my journey of personal development, right? This is when I started to kind of wake up, I guess. And in that process of uh, at discovering myself, I discovered how introverted I was and so for me what introversion is I mean the spectrum right so I love what you said that you an introvert sometimes you're an extrovert sometimes and we're somewhere in the middle there's always a spectrum and depending on certain circumstances we are either more introverted or more extroverted too but for me specifically what introversion means is two things it's how we actually process the world 
So through that lens, how we actually, what do we see? What is our perspective? How do we actually analyze things? We're deeply analytical, deeply curious, deeply introspective. We have multiple tabs open in our head at any one time. And sometimes the words don't flow as much as the brain's going, you know, but it's very much about that deep introspection, how we process the world. And the second thing was how we actually recharge, how we actually, um, where do we actually recharge our energy? And so for me, that was a game changer. It actually um, had me close that business down. I actually burnt that business to the ground because it was so ill-suited uh, to me and my personality and how I actually um, regain my energy or at least fueled me. Fueled, it, it drained me rather than fueled me, right? And so this is the piece that I keep front and center as I build my businesses now is how can I prioritize my energy management. That is number one for me as an introvert. So that's kind of what I, my definition of um, introversion. So many people feel like that's the dictionary definition of it's a wallflower, shy, all those things that you think about the bookworm, nerd sitting in the corner. And I, I'm none of those, well, I was some of those things. I'm working, I've worked on the self-confidence piece, it's completely separate, right? Um, but I'm on that crusade to change the dictionary definition of introversion too, because it is such um, an outdated way of thinking about what it means to be an introvert. Yeah. Mm, I love that. And I remember, I can't remember who I heard this from, but I, I love the visual that uh, they gave, which was extroverts, if you can imagine a little power cord coming out of yourself, it, an extrovert plugs into other people, and that's how they gain energy, mm -hmm. and an introvert, they actually plug into themselves, and that's how they gain energy, mm -hmm. and I, I think that's a really fun visual, and it's empowering for introverts, too. Absolutely, absolutely, I love this quote, there's a quote by Sophia Dembling, and she says, um, extroverts sparkle, introverts glow, find your oh. own inner glow isn't that gorgeous yeah that's good okay that's a great one I love it <laughs> okay so since we're talking to in introverts today let's talk about introvert superpowers mm, gosh I, well I, I personally again myself other I'm than glowing right <laughs> right glowing <laughs> <laughs> I think it's several right number one is we do be curious um, so we really like to go deep. I don't know if your listeners hate small talk or hate the phone as much as me, but we really like the deep, meaningful conversations, right? I will prioritize that over anything else. Um, that's why I kind of avoid networking, business networking, especially speed networking, like the black plague. That's just not for me, right? And so it is this piece about being deeply curious. It's about actively listening. So we're really good at actively listening and really picking up on all the nuances of not just the words that are coming out of each another person's mouth, but actually picking up on the body language, the nuance and tone and all those kind of things. And um, I mentioned the introspection piece too. So again, um, analyzing and taking time to process our thoughts before we speak them out. So sometimes they'll come out as a kind of garbled blah, 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 because we've got so much in our heads that we want to express it really quickly. But oftentimes we just take the time to deeply think about something first. And so you'll find, I think, one of the superpowers is the then ability to express something that's really well thought out. So those are just a few that I think are really beautiful in terms of identifying those things for yourself to become a better leader and a better business owner. And you mentioned that in the past, you actually switched your industry or maybe not your industry, but your business formation because of learning about introversion. So are there types of businesses or roles within businesses that uh, introverts don't really work well in versus where they do? This is such a great question, Sam, because again, I think it, it's so individual, right? And this is what really drives me crazy is this whole piece around cookie kind of formulas, right? So it's like, try this because this thing is the thing that's gonna work for you. And I've seen so many of my clients come to me because like, Casey, I try to implement this strategy and it just didn't work for me. And I'm just exhausted and I'm drained and I'm frustrated and I just don't know what to do next, right? I actually had someone in tears just yesterday. She spent like so much money trying to implement marketing that just was so misaligned to who she was. And so in terms of your question, Sam, I think 
really it's about tapping into that inner wisdom. So this is this piece where I think, again, as introverts, we're deeply intuitive, right? Part, I think it goes hand in hand. I haven't got any statistics around that. I think it would be a really good exercise to actually see. I mean, I think we've all got inner wisdom inside of us, regardless of how we identify on the introversion, extroversion spectrum. But I think this deep intuition and tapping, the ability to tap in and listen to those little whispers and that inner wisdom is the key to sustainable success. So for me, when I decided to just burn down the business, which was agency style, it was a niggle that got louder and louder and louder for me. I was like, I can't actually carry on like this. What? And so that then set me on the path to try so many different things to actually figure out what fitted for me. So, you know, I then closed that now down. I started what is now the Quiet Collective. And, you know, we've tried one-on-one, we've tried memberships, we've tried online programs, we've done group programs, I've tried it all, but products, you know, all the things. I was like, what lights me up? What makes me so, you know, just buzz with excitement and fuel me rather than drain me? And so for me, coming back to this piece around deep connection, connection is one of my biggest values. Um, and so how can I create deep connection with my community? And so for me, at this point, in the season of my life it's about small intimate programs so I work one-to-one and I work with small groups but we go really deep so that suits me but that may not suit another introvert right some introverts may love speaking from stage and they may hate the, the deep connection but it's up to you to kind of figure that out for yourself and to add an extra layer of nuance on onto this it's like it doesn't stay the same because other stressors in your life, where you're living, like what other hobbies you have, where your family's at, like it'll impact how much you're able to give to your business, connect with other people. Um, I know this was big, big for me where like, oh, all these other things in my life and this other business thing and this, my husband, blah, 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 blah. It suddenly made it so that things that used to light me up and work really well in my business were these huge stressors. And it wasn't that I changed necessarily, it's other circumstances in my life changed and were, was drawing from me. That's right. I love that, Sam. And so this is, a, I love that as well. And so really looking at your business is fluid too. So how can you adapt to the change? Because again, what I know to be true around being a business for the last eight-ish years is that it's, it's um, everything, um, is a learning and so the more that you are willing to embrace change and go with the flow of the change the success of your business too right mm, so good so we were chatting before we got on and started the live video and um you had mentioned that there is one area where introverts can actually be holding themselves back and i want you to tell us now <laughs> <laughs> Well, yes. So what I have seen over the several years is on this label of introversion. And it it can be a good thing, right? Because we've got all these superpowers. But what I noticed in my clients is that they were all coming to me because they were like, they were struggling to put themselves out there. They were struggling with visibility. They were struggling with being the face of their brand. They were struggling to uh, market themselves and promote themselves and all the things, right, Sam? And so what I noticed is, hold on, what's going on here? And for the ones that were really stuck, I started to notice that they were using this label of introversion as an excuse to hide behind, right? This is the thing. It's like, oh, well, I'm introverted, so I can't, right? I'm introverted, so doing that thing is going to exhaust me. I can't because it's going, one of the phrases is going to, you know, putting myself out there on social media is going to make me break out in hives. Well, there's a whole nother reason around, you know, not being on social media, but introversion isn't one of them. And so this is this piece that I really noticed is a call in a second. We can't use labels as excuses to hide behind. And this is the big piece. It's like you've got to tap in to what I call your quiet rebel, right? It's that piece. So many of my clients are those women have a deep desire to do good in the world so many of them have come to me and said Casey I don't want just to create a business I want to create a movement it's about change right how can I create those that change in myself in my community in the world you know one of my clients is I want to do I want to um, create generational change I should the relationship coach and I want to create generational change that 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 
the wars in such an epidemic, you know, right now. I want to create um, societal change. I want to create environmental change. All those big things. And I was like, well, if you can't use introversion as an excuse to hide behind if you've got that burning desire to do good in the world. And so that's part of the work that we do inside of my programs is really being able to now tap into that quiet rebel. And how can you actually find it? And how can you then bring it out into the world in a way that uh, immediately is attractive? So people are going, yes, 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 I believe in that. I believe in that. I want to be part of your world. And then you get to then, you know, grow your business in that way. But I think that key piece is being able to tap into that quiet rebel and feel the, the emotion around that because that's going to be the driving force and dropping all the masks and excuses and, and, or, and labels and all that kind of stuff, right? I love this so much. This is such a good hack because I mean, fire, which is very often associated with anger. Um, I've, I've actually seen quite a few um, people who work with like more newer businesses, like ask mm -hmm. what makes you angry? What makes you mad about your in industry? What are these things? And it's such a powerful emotion and element to, to tap into because it is an element of action. Like if you think about anger it's just like if you really tap into and like embrace your anger versus like suppressing it and like shaming it it's like this this like completely renewable endless powerful resource of energy so I absolutely love this it's I, I imagine it works incredibly quickly with your clients it's it's a massive it's transformational yeah. right Sam and I think this piece that I really want to tap into too because I think one of the things is like attracts like too. So the more that you can stand in your power, right, immediately you're actually shifting who you're calling into your world too, yeah. right? So for me, it's very much like, how can you hold yourself in this power? Because you become a magnet mm -hmm. for that other person that is drawn to you. But the piece I bring in here, tapping into this piece around anger that I think is really key is values alignment mm. and so it's not about you know let's niche and i'm just kind of switching gears and saying let's niche down and identify your ideal niches and mm. what's the demographic oh well i'll identify you know my niche is introverts yes the introverts but what's the values alignment piece right yeah. because again when you can attract clients that have value, values that are aligned to yours then now that's when they'll move and so one of the key pieces that we look at is, okay, what are your values? And the way that I did, I, did the, I learned this from uh, one of my mentors. She, she, called, she called it the three Vs around values. What are your, where in your life have your values been violated? So that's the piece, right? And again, when you think about anger, when you think about, okay, let's kind of do an audit of your life. And when were you so revved up that something drove you so crazy, that is a marker that that's one of your values. So how can you articulate that in a way that's a captive to your audience because that then makes it magnetic, right? So what are the violations? What are the voids? So what's missing in your life? Where do you find like, again, you're like really wishful, like, you know, I can feel that there's this emptiness. There's something missing in my life. What is that feeling? Because again, that's going to be a marker for yourself around what your values are, which are the things that are going to help you help you move. Yeah. And then the last thing is vision. And so again, we it's easy to tap into the vision piece, but it's not so easy to tap into the violations and voids piece because those are all going to be able to help you um, find where you want to go and to then attract people that are like-minded. Yeah. Mm, so good. And let's just pause for a moment to really articulate this and everyone. Uh, make a note of, you can go right now, because I mean, those three Vs are so key for building a brand, for um, getting clear on your messaging and making it really powerful. So that was um, violations, void, void, and vision. And vision, yes. Okay, so that's something you can journal about tonight and get really clear on and see how you can actually be incorporating this into your business and in, into your brand. Yeah, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so key, right, Sam? And this is, yeah, and this is all about, when we talk about identifying that quiet rebel, this is the piece about tapping into that inner wisdom for yourself, right? And I think a lot of your audience is in that space of being able to tap into that inner wisdom. So it's now about, okay, how can you take that and then put some structure around it, which is the work that you do so amazingly, right? Is being able to, um, you know, allow people to be in their feminine flow, but create, create those masculine 
structures and systems and processes for, to, to allow them to be in that feminine flow too, which is so important. So true. <laughs> So what, else, what other recommendations do you have for introverts um, beyond really stepping into this quiet rebel identity? In terms of building their business and creating the structure, it's about not following cookie cutter formulas, Sam. So again, it's about going against the grain, being okay with challenging the status quo and being okay to test and experiment and burn bridges along the way, right? <laughs> So what I wanted to share is the quiet conquer code is something that I've kind of taken my 20 years plus marketing experience and we've really looked at, okay, let's put the marketing four P's of marketing theoretically into a framework that you can use, um, you can look, look at through an introverted lens, right? And so I, I've actually called, I've summarized it into the four C's. I've got, um, I've got, um, a resource that I can share with you at the end that goes deeper into the nine C's. But I think the four C's that are so key here, um, Sam, are number one, clarity. So as you tap into your inner wisdom, it's about really being able to articulate what it is that you stand for, what it is that you, uh, why are you different? So again, what is your unique awesome source, I call it? And how can you stand out from the crowd that way? And I think the piece here that is so important to touch on this a little bit in terms of the values and getting clear on your own values and getting to know yourself differently so you can actually attract people differently. But I think there's a big shift around getting really clear on who your ideal clients are. I call them my chicken soup for the soul clients. So they're those ones that are like, oh my gosh, if I could clone this person a hundred times, my business would just be the cosiest, dreamiest I can imagine. And so I start to think about, okay, we talked a little bit about niche, but it's more than that. It's about attracting your ball clients rather than your brick clients. And so the, I'm touching a little bit on this because it's moving those stuck people. So, you know, a brick is someone you've got to drag up the hill towards transformation and that, oh, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, but all these challenges get, get in the way. Whereas a little ball, you give them a little flick and off their, uh, off their way to the races, right? They're implementing and all that kind of stuff. So the distinction here that I like to talk about is starting to shift your the way that you speak to your ideal client and calling in those people who are self-led, who are self-motivated, who trust themselves, who are quick decision makers, who are committed, right? So getting really clear on looking at your audience, are you talking to stuck people or are you talking to the people that are actually willing to move on their own. Yes, you may help them and you may guide them with the guardrail, but they can lead themselves. They just want to help leading. They just want some help to help them get there faster, right? So that's the clarity piece. Um, the second one is commitment. And for me, this has been absolutely game changing. I was very masculine driven, goal setting, all the things, tick off the box, bullet points, all the things. And what I've realized leaning more into my feminine is underneath the goal setting. If you don't have commitment underneath the goal setting, that is where the friction happens, right? So if you don't have commitment, for me, commitment is leaning in, knowing when to lean in and knowing when to lean out, right? And so this has been a real practice for me. It's like, yes, I'm committed to the end goal. I have a crystal clear vision of the top of my, my Mount Everest, of where I'm headed. But how can I get to base camp? What do I need in terms of energy management? When do I need to lean into my business and not hustle, but move, right? When do I need to let, sit back and just let things happen? So that balance around commitment, always being attached to the end goal, but having that balance of leaning in and leaning out is so key. The third one is connection, which is around ditching, cooking, Kind of formulas around marketing tactics <laughs> and actually putting relationships front and center and so you know we talked at the top of the hour is talking about how do you go that extra mile for me it's around how can you actually start to ditch the funnel and literally look at how can you start to build relationships with your people and how can you actually start to allow them to feel seen, to feel heard, 
to feel understood, to create that anticipation of what's Kate going to be launching next, you know? I'm so excited to be in her world. I just love her vibe. I love her energy. I want to be a part of that. That's the feeling that you want to create. And then, of course, everything else is just a cherry on the top because people are bought in to your vision and your mission. And then your offers then just slot into that in a way that just makes sense. And that's all the strategy piece, right? And then the last piece is the messaging, the communication. It's the fourth C is communication. And, and for me, being able to communicate effectively is the most important thing because you have got to simplify it in a way that makes sense to your audience so that they get it. And so that messaging piece, I don't often say, it, I say to people, you don't have a marketing problem. Oftentimes you've got a messaging problem. And it's because of one of those other three C's. You haven't got clear on the, cl the clarity, the, the commitment, and the way that you want to actually connect with your audience too. Mm, so good. And just, I wanted to jump back to clarity for a second when you're talking about the brick versus ball. I think this is such an easy trap to fall into for people because a lot of people just talk to the people in front of them instead of the people who actually they want to work with. Like someone will DM them a question. You'd be like, oh, I know the answer to that. And then you'll write a full post on it, mm -hmm. even though that you would never want to work with that person. And they're not even close what to the right person, you know, like, <laughs> so I just wanted to underline that because it is so easy to fall into like you almost need a post-it note next to your computer being like am I talking to who I actually want to work with <laughs> exactly exactly right so true so true Sam yeah. that, that's key and that was a game changer for me when I realized you know the women that I'm talking to are introverted but they're not the introverts that are stuck using the label to stick, to mm -hmm. to stay stuck right it's that piece around really being able to move and it is those ones that have that deep desire to do make a change in the world to create change in the world and that was a big shift for me that changed everything really yeah and I mean in this little spiritual corner of the internet all of us really love labels we really really do yeah. like <laughs> astrology labels human design labels I'm a witch I'm an introvert I'm whatever and um it can be really powerful and enlightening and illuminating but also it can be the thing that holds you back and is like this this barrier from you to actually getting to where you want to be because you decided to be defined by someone else's labels right there you go so true yes 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 mm -hmm. and I mean on that note would you be willing to share your sun moon and rising <laughs> I don't actually know what that is what okay no I don't know what that is. I know that it up after the fact. I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna have to Google that, right? I'm gonna I saw Google your that. pendulum, so come on. Yeah, I've, 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 I've just actually started, and that is a brand new for me, Sam. Mm -hmm. It's a pendulum, so I'm very excited. I'm actually starting a program next week, actually, on this. Oh, but I do know that I'm a manifesting generator. Okay, so great. that is one thing that I know is that I'm a manifesting generator, right? Uh huh. <laughs> Well, so uh, your sun sign is uh, in astrology is like your main sign that you like, I'm a Virgo, I'm a whatever that. Oh, I'm a, Pi I'm a Pisces. I'm a you're Pisces. Pisces. So that's your sun. And then there's your moon sign and then there's your rising sign. So those are the other, okay. those three together are kind of like, there's like little kitschy names for the, but like, it's like the big three in astrology of what you, like what you share. <laughs> You're going to have to look it up. Uh, this is a rabbit hole. So, <laughs> you made me so curious. I talked I talk to my audience about being fanatically curious. And now that I've heard something, I'm going to go totally down that rabbit hole of investigation. I know myself. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. Well, I'm excited for you. <laughs> Uh, I love that you know your human design but not your like big three in astrology I know right <laughs> I feel like human design is taking over the internet in the last couple of years so that makes sense it's amazing it's amazing right yeah for sure it's something that I again I went down that rabbit hole and we bought uh, we brought an expert in to talk about how to build a team based on our, men, on our human sign and it's been a fascinating exploration around that for sure I was definitely thinking when you were talking about how um, introverts use that term to hold them back because like, I can't do this because I'm an introvert. I can't do this. I was thinking about projectors in human design of like, that is super common. Like, I can't do this in my business because I'm a projector. I can't work a bunch of hours because I'm a projector. And it's just like, that could be true for you. If that's empowering for you, do it. But sometimes it's not at all. <laughs> 
Exactly right. Exactly right. So this is, uh, again, let's, I mean, this is the big piece, exactly what you said is, okay, let's, we love to actually do the test and uh, look, put those labels on ourselves, but really start to challenge yourself. Am I using it? Am I using these things to hold myself back? Or am I using them to empower myself? And I think this is, uh, this has been such a key learning for me as much as doing that self-development and exploratory work it is key to really look at okay how can I use even that little nugget what, what can I like I'm starting to notice for yourself how can I use this as a superpower rather than something that's actually stopping me from moving forward this is what you think of when I was like 21 I found Danielle Laporte's fire starter sessions mm -hmm. you ever read that book oh my just gosh okay. I haven't yeah. read it since then so like I can't even remember yeah. what's in it but I remember it really like ignited me speaking of fire <laughs> yeah <laughs> after that I started like it really encouraged um I felt so called to like cut out certain things in my life and like cut up people in my life and all these things and I went through a period of a few years where I felt like sure that was probably a good thing but also it 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 took a lot of um connection out of my life it took a lot of um of um meaning and uh purpose out of my life even and I can't I I wish I I, I remembered the exact thing but I I think a lot of people when they're told that like oh you're this this way and you have to let go of these people or else it's going to hold you back and blah 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 it, that could be true but there's also I I see a lot of um spiritual people cutting a lot of things and people and whatever out of their life and then there's just this void speaking em of void. Empty, empty, emptiness right exactly yeah. exactly right that's, a, that's big, right? This is, I think, again, Sam, as you're thinking about that, I'm really reflecting on, because there's a big piece that popped up for me as you're talking about this is boundaries, right? So again, yeah. I mean, this is, this is across the board. I'm not just talking specifically around introversion here, you know, but really looking at, okay, these are the markers to, know, to start to notice for yourself instead of just kind of eliminating it all. Yeah. And start to actually again really pay attention to yourself it's like what can I learn from this and mm -hmm. is this personal thing in my life and is my my value being violated or is there a void and why is it here to teach me and rather than completely cutting it out can you keep it in there as a place, as a place of learning right yeah. rather than then simply just completely ditching it too because that's that's easy but then what's left to, and again, if we we all human, one of our basic human needs is connection too. So being really mindful of that is key. Do you find that um, introverts are more likely to be workaholics? I can speak from my own personal experience is that um, yes. <laughs> um, however, I don't know whether it's actually it's an introvert thing. So. I don't think it's an I don't think it's an introversion thing, Sam. I actually think it's more of a what well, well, from my own personal experience, what I know to be true is that um for the longest time, and you know, your audience will get this, I felt cut off from the neck down in mm. terms of being able to feel my emotions, right? And so when I was on this journey of personal development, not only did I recognize that I was introverted, but I recognized that I had completely shut from what my body was trying to tell me and even feel, right? And so what I realized in that journey was that one of the things that I was doing um, as a numbing strategy, as a thing to kind of shut out all the emotions was keeping ultra busy, right? And so that was a huge shift for me um, was that, look, okay, now that I'm aware of that, how can I start to feel my emotions, create the space to feel the good and the bad, right? Because I was equally cut off from the amazing celebration, the celebratory piece about me, but also the deep emotions too, right? So creating space for that and letting go, letting go of the busyness. Mm -hmm. um, well, it had been in habit for 20 years, right? I'm driven type A ambitious woman at the same time too. And that's what I, I, I wore that as a badge of honor, 
Yeah. You know, talk about labels. I was wearing that as a badge of honor too, but you know, I had to kind of really take a step back and start to shift that habit that had become so familiar to me. But I don't think it was introversion. It's mm -hmm. I think it's the it's um it was a coping coping mechanism for me. Yeah. Well, if you if you're the kind of person who doesn't let yourself go pee until you finish one more page or one more email mm -hmm. or five more minutes, like pay attention to that. <laughs> this is this is huge, right? And this ties into the energy management piece, Sam, right? So for me, as I started to recognize this, because again, I was exactly like that. I'll just work until 10 o'clock at night. Don't worry about the children. I'll throw food on the dinner table, but I've got to get back to work and off I would go, right? What I realized was I actually have white space scheduled in my calendar mm. for two hours every day mm. now and so that's aside from my exercise or any other kind of rituals that I have for me it's white space time where I just literally sit and I be and I don't do anything the amount of downloads things that happen just from a place just being in that space was so huge for me Sam like uh, but it felt so uncomfortable when I first started it, because it was so unfamiliar, right? I was like, I should be doing something. I should be doing something. I'm wasting time. What am I doing? And all these thoughts going on in my head, right? But for me, everything shifted with the, I call it my, I love labels. I call it my three Ds, right? And it's the way that I, 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 I've actually lost 20 kilo. I had to have some surgery and I had to lose a ton of weight. I've lost like over 40 pounds in weight, but it's all the same. It's the three Ds, right? And so for me, around habit change, it was literally making the decision. So I was like, Casey, you're working too hard, I'm making a decision not to work so hard. Then it's the dedication, right? So it's the dedication to say, how can I carry on with this commitment? The commitment piece is so huge. How can I lead myself in this? And then the third one is daily devotion to that. Mm, yeah. And so how can I have that daily devotion to showing up? And that's why in my calendar, my white space is purple and it's my time to just literally take that time out. And I, I genuinely actually um view it as it's like an appointment with my top mind it's like okay my time now nah, i'm just going to switch off and it's it's changed changed the trajectory of my business um oh, wow. as a result of that you know spaciousness gotta have that spacious calendar mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, one of the things that um i will often talk to clients about it who have a hard time um, working less or they'll just like fill fill their calendar with like busy work or they'll take eight hours on something that only needs to take one or two um, is it's it's often because they don't have a life outside of their business or things to do outside of their business. It's like, I mean, it's, it's, it's not like where you're saying like, it's just like two hours of completely open white space a day. My, like, <laughs> my like hack for people is just like, go to the gym five times a week. I don't know, like have a standing coffee date with a friend, go start a new hobby and like actually spend hours every single week doing it. This is because <laughs> for a lot of people that white space will actually not happen. <laughs> Correct. So, so yeah. it's so true, right, Sam? And as I'm saying, as I'm saying that this has been a work in progress, right? Because I remember, you know, probably a few years ago, one of my coaches said to me, said to me, Casey, well, go and have fun. And I looked at her blankly. Oh, yeah. Fun? Yeah. I don't know what that is. And I was so mortified that I had forgotten what fun actually meant to me, Sam. It was I nice, right? had the exact same experience of someone asking me. It was like a, a friend of my husband being like, what do you do for fun? Or like, what do you do? Whatever. And I like didn't have an answer for that. <laughs> I was so embarrassed. <laughs> I know, right? Talk about that quiet rebel piece too, right? Again, this is part of tapping into our quiet rebel and figuring out what play means to us yeah. too, right? This has been my journey. It's like, I say to my clients, play is the gateway to more abundance in your life, right? And that thing's so true for me too. So first of all, figuring out what, what I, what's fun for me and how can I start to do that? And I think the more that you practice that, then it's all, that was my that was my journey, right? Okay, what's fun? I'm Pisces. I love the ocean. I mm -hmm. love walking. The waves to me just are the most soothing, beautiful. The smell, everything about being at the ocean is amazing. And so I adopted the habit decision. 
with a dedication, mm-hmm. daily devotion. And I'd, go, I'd drive down to the ocean, 30 minutes, I'd drive and I would go and walk and either meditate or whatever it was. But that for me was just like, that was so fun for me, mm-hmm. right? And so I got into that habit first and mm-hmm. then I was able to, okay, okay, now I do that on a regular basis. How can I now just create my white space? And so that was the kind of evolution of me um, adopting these sacred rituals and practices and habits that allow me to tap more into that inner wisdom for myself. Right? And um, just because I'm like, I can hear people's voices in my head. <laughs> like <laughs> One response is like, even if your business is like your heart and soul, soul mission, you're obsessed with it, all the things, there's so much value in having a life outside of your business. So like, Hallelujah. I have to under, like, cause I can hear people being like, oh, that doesn't apply to me. It just means you to like, I, oh, I just hit my mic. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like I, because I'm obsessed with my business. I just want to work all the time. But what if I want to work all the time? It's just like, no, you just have it. Like do the work to find the things outside of business that you're passionate about. It matters. And the other thing is like, if you're new to business and you're in a hustle phase, like that's okay too. <laughs> that's okay, exactly right. I remember the hustle phase. I remember the hustle phase. And so it's so true, right? Again, I'm, I'm passionate about my business. I really, women, women are going to heal and lead the world, especially the quiet ones, right? I'm on a mission <laughs> around that. I'm deeply passionate about that, right? And at the same time, my walking is my pathway to multi million dollars. Mm-hmm. Right. That, that's why, because when I take time out, the clarity that comes through, the, drop, the, the drops that come through, you know, I mentioned that we're hosting uh, this, this five-day challenge around quiet rebellion at the moment. Like, literally, that dropped in for me, and it's like my 10 years of, you know, being in business on my own has come full circle, and the momentum that's happening inside that group is phenomenal in four days. That wouldn't have come if I hadn't been moving, right? like that idea dropped in that like I, so it's about really you know it's so easy to get caught up into our businesses because we love them so much yeah. I, I mean I can I do I love my business I every morning feeling excited I get to go to work you know but at the same time it's so key to prioritize these people for yourself Mm, so good. Well, thank you so much, Casey, for coming on. Um, before we we wrap up, I wanted to first ask, do you have, what are your three favorite books that you love to share with people? Mm-hmm. Gosh, I'm a, <clears throat> I'm a bookworm. So let me think about my favorite ones. I think anything by Brene Brown okay. is amazing, right? So any, any of her books, I would say, are amazing. Um, I loved something by Jeff Olson called The Slight Edge. And I think it's all about taking that little steps, those baby steps at a time to move forward. And one of the books that really shifted the game for me is The Quiet Revolution by uh, The Quiet by Susan Kane. So going deeper into introversion for me was huge. And so Susan Quiet was, was big for me. What was it? A quiet what? No, it's called Quiet. Her oh, okay. I was like, called, there's nothing else. That's yeah. why I'm not hearing it. Yeah, no, it's called Quiet. It's called Quiet. Yes. yes. <laughs> quiet. Quiet by Susan Kane. Okay, cool. Um, excellent. And for people who want to go deeper with you, who want to work with you, where can they find you? Um, all the things. Yes, fantastic. Thank you, Sam. So I have, we touched on the four C's. I have got a resource called the Introvert's Guide to Marketing, and we go deeper into those four Cs. There's actually nine Cs that I talk about. So you can find that at quietcollective.com.au forward slash marketing. So there's .com.au. I'm in Australia. And um, if you would like to join our Facebook community, it's called Introverted Women in Business. And you're more than welcome to come and join us there. Awesome. So good. Thank you so much, Casey. This is so fun. Um, I know that people got so much out of it and I hope you all join her Facebook group and download the guide to get five more C's. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Any closing messages you want to share? If you are an introvert and you using it as a label to stay stuck, ditch the label Tap into your inner quiet rebel and create the impact that you want to make in the world. You ready? Awesome. Okay. Thanks everyone. See you next week.